Hello, and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today we're going to be looking at a concept builder titled Polarization on physicsclassroom.com uh, under the topic of static electricity. Uh, polarization, you probably remember from chemistry if you're at a school that took chemistry uh, prior to taking physics. Um, uh, you'll recognize a water molecule here with one oxygen and two hydrogens, H2O. And you might remember that oxygen is more electronegative. So we can see here that the electrons tend to gather around the oxygen and leave uh, the area around the hydrogens a little bit sparse of electron activity. That creates a polarization, meaning this side's gonna be negatively charged and this side will be positively charged. That's the same idea of what we're looking at here, except for now we're not looking within an atom. Instead, now we're looking at a, a neutral material. In this case, we have a conductor. Remember, conductors, electrons can easily leave their atoms, meaning they can flow from one part of the object to the other. So when we bring a negative object near this neutral object, the electrons get pushed this way because like charges repel. So the electrons get pushed that way. You might remember a few, uh, a few concept builders ago on, uh, getting the hang of charge. Um, we looked at this, how a neutral object is attracted to a charged object because the sides that are closest together are opposite because this has pushed the electrons away. Keep in mind the opposite could happen as well. Let's just imagine it over here. If we put a positive charge over here, that would draw the electrons towards the positive charge and would end up with a separation as well. Remembering, of course, that the protons are locked in place. If you ever tell me that a proton is moving, it means you're taking it out of its nucleus, which would cause a nuclear reaction and destroy your city. So please don't destroy your city and tell me that the protons are flowing through a material. It's only the electrons that will be pushed, or that, we, that will flow. The protons will feel a tug, but it's not strong enough to rip them out of their nucleus. All right, so let's get into some examples from today's uh, polarization concept builder. So notice, first of all, this is just like we saw in conductors and insulators, where the conductors are labeled as white and the insulators are labeled as gray. So we can see here we got a, a two conductors touching each other and an insulator over here. Okay, so you'll see that there's two things you have to do. You have to talk about the particle movement and you have to show the charge distribution. Okay, so first thing, the particle movement, uh, we have to remember what's going to move. Are electrons or protons going to be affected by this? Well, they're both going to have a force on them, but only the electrons can actually move. So will the electrons be attracted to the negative charge or repelled from it? They will be repelled because electrons are negative also. Okay, so we'll have the electrons being repelled from uh, the, that charge. Uh, notice that I only drew it coming as far as the end of the conductor because the electrons can't flow. There's no particle movement in the insulator. Okay, they might move around within the atom, but not through the whole substance. Okay, um, and the fact that they can move within the atom is why there can be attraction between an insulator and a charge. Okay, um, but then next we get to the charge distribution. So what's that gonna do? Well, if we push all the extra electrons over this direction, or a bunch of them, then that's going to leave a bunch of uh, uh, protons over here without partners. Okay, and so we'll get a start charge distribution. Once again, because these are both conductors, they can flow all the way through from one conductor to the other um, when, when they're in contact like this. Okay, so we'll see something like that. Then we look over here. And we again see a negative charge in our second example. And so we know that the electrons are going to be pushed away from that negative charge, but they can only be pushed through the conductor. The insulator will, will uh, hold on to its electrons and not allow them to move, so they can't flow through that part. But these electrons over here in this far uh, conductor still feel the presence of this negative uh, balloon. Later, we'll talk about the electric field it creates, that they're in the electric field, um, and that's why they're feeling it. But for right now, they'll feel it. Will they feel it with the same strength? No. They're farther away. 
and so they won't feel it with the same strength. Same idea with gravity. You move far enough away from the Earth, you don't feel as much gravity. Same thing with magnets. If you pull two magnets farther apart, there's less force between them. When they're close together, there's more force. Okay. Um, so then what's that going to do for charge? Well, these electrons here have moved over here, okay, leaving behind protons that don't have partners. So we got negative and positive separated. It's polarized. Um, then over on our right side over here, this conductor, there's still a flow of electrons because there's still an electric field there and it is a conductor. But because it's farther away, we're going to represent that with less flow of charge because there's a weaker electric field by that point. Okay, so fewer positives and negatives. And that's what you have to do on this polarization uh, worksheet is look at what charge it is. Are the electrons going to be attracted or repelled? And if the electrons move that way, where will the negative charges end up? If the electrons move that way, where will the negative charges end up? And that's the idea. Have fun puzzling it out on uh, physicsclassroom.com. And we'll see you next time on the Scientific Adventures of Beardman.